How's it going? This is RaySpace and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video, I discussed Scott Manley's idea to use Twin Falcon 9 stages to boost the Blue Moon Lander and Orion over to the moon. I didn't go through all the possible objections to that because my focus was on A, uh, mentioning that we could probably just use the New Glenn upper stage instead of the Twin Falcon 9 stages because the numbers do actually work out in this case. A B, yes, you can do it in Kerbal Space Program and preferably with real solar system and all that. You don't have to worry about the rocket breaking in half. I just wanted to demonstrate that Kerbal Space Program is not fundamentally inferior to Juno in that respect. I felt like that was conveyed by the original video by Scott Manley and I think that was unfair to Kerbal Space Program. And I also wanted to show really how tight the delta V margins were on that particular plan and maybe a little bit uh, too tight depending on how it's executed. So I, I focused on those points rather than all the other points people brought up in the comments. And uh, rather than uh, go and address those points with the Falcon 9 stages, let me criticize instead my own idea, right? Uh, I think uh, we can just uh, take tackle the New Glenn upper stage version and see what's wrong with it. And I think that's fair, so I'm not constantly uh, blasting somebody else. So, I, I prefer the New Glenn as the stage in this scenario, but it's still not necessarily the best idea, and let's talk about why. So we have this really tall rocket, and what are the problems with that? Now I should preface that I am not an engineer. I have tried my best to learn all the stuff. I've watched college lectures, I've read books, I've worked through the equations, and I don't just use preset Kerbal Space Program parts. I've designed my own parts a lot of the time, and so you've seen me use very custom things, and occasionally I've shown how I calculated the information for those parts. So I, I went through it, but in creating rockets, there is one thing that I almost never tackle, and instead of trying to work through those horrible equations, I just use analogy. Like I say, well, this body is very much like that real rocket body, and so I'm just going to use those numbers, which is why for my own Kasei rocket, I use the same diameter as the SLS. And for my Kasei 2 rocket, I use the same diameter as the Saturn V. That simplifies it so that I don't have to worry about the wind gusts. So the, when, when looking at the lectures on how to design a rocket, the one sticking point was how to reinforce the rocket for wind gusts because those equations were horrendous and really I didn't see how to get from one end to the other. Like, I couldn't even figure out how to get all the inputs because real engineers have a lot of sophisticated software, they have wind tunnel testing, they have things that I can't do. Um, so they can input the information into the equations that I can't. Yes, the problem that we have with this tall rocket is those wind gusts because uh, you, you, I mean, you might have seen with some uh, rocket launch aborts, they'll say that they have upper level winds. And the reason why upper level winds are a problem is because uh, they'll cause too much strain on the rocket and potentially cause the whole darn thing to buckle. So in fact, when Scott Manley had his really tall rocket bend in half in the video, that was Kerbal sort of being unintentionally realistic in a way. Starship and Super Heavy are not meant to have this kind of thing on top of them. They're just not designed, these tanks are not designed to have some a, a gust hit up here. There is no up here on Starship and Super Heavy. So when they lengthen Starship and Super Heavy, they're also going to have to take that into account. They're going to have to strengthen it more when they make it, uh, when they make the version, what is it, 4 now? Version 4, when they lengthen it, they're going to have to reinforce the whole thing uh, because they originally made it so that it would suit the height that it has. Now, this is even taller than Starship version 4 would be, so that is a big problem for our stack. So the dry tank masses of both Super Heavy and the expendable Starship will need to be larger. 
So that's problem number one. Uh, problem number two is just this part. This expendable starship is not meant to have more than 200 tons on top of it. This is 262 tons when we've got Orion, the lander, and the stage. They didn't design this for that much. They designed it to maybe have 100 tons on top, and that was with the additional structure, you know, the nose. So uh, we're, we're putting this mass directly onto the top of the tank, and it's not meant for that. Now, you might say, well, Starship is maybe meant to carry up to 300 tons expendable. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's probably not going to carry more than 100 tons. If, uh, insofar as it's going to carry anything more, it's probably going to be spare fuel in the tanks, and then it's going to transfer that fuel out of the tanks into whatever it's delivering fuel to. Uh, so that it will do. But it is not going to uh, carry a 200 ton thing on top. It doesn't even have the volume to do that. Right. I mean, take a look at how much volume all this would take. It doesn't have Starship just doesn't have the volume to carry anything much more than 100 tons anyway. So it is not structurally built for that. We still haven't seen it carry even that load. About 262 tons or 255 tons is right out. Uh, well, I've taken off the fairings, so there's 262 with the fairings. That's those are pretty light fairings actually. I might have to reconsider that. So. Even without the complications produced by the dual Falcon 9 stage, which of course was even more mass, uh, this is inadvisable. This is probably going to crush our poor little Saturn, uh, star, not Saturn V, Starship expendable stage, unless we reinforce it. So there is that. There are other issues. Pekka, during the live stream when I did it, pointed out that they haven't fixed the pressurization problem. Maybe it would require more mass, so the dry mass of it goes up again. And uh, some people could uh, say that, well, things will change with uh, version 3 of everything, uh, with Raptor version 3, and, well, that's another thing. And if we have nine engines on here, what happens? If we have an extended tank here, that's a different thing. Uh, those could be beneficial factors, but uh, because we have more engines in the larger tank that could help things out, uh, but we would still need to strengthen this in order to have the heavy load on top, and we would have to strengthen it more and have even more dry mass in order to deal with the gusts because this is so darn tall. So, what is the solution to all this, really? I mean, it wasn't designed for this, it's going to have to be redesigned, so we might as well design something from scratch, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, it isn't meant for this. You can't really do a drop-in thing here. You could drop, I mean, the, the new Glenn upper stage uh, will also probably need to be redesigned because it's not meant to carry more than 45 tons on top. And so as it's thrusting, it might have a problem having 100 tons on top instead of it's rated 45 tons to Leo. So it depends on how they've done that, but probably it needs to be strengthened too. It was meant to be cheap. And the whole it was meant to be cheap thing probably means it's not human rated. So yeah, that's a problem with that. The Falcon 9 upper stage is human rated, but not when it's in the pair. <laughs> and people pointed out, well, you have uh, two radiating nozzles next to each other, that's probably bad. It's like clustering the RS-68s next to each other on the bottom of Ares V, uh, which they discovered that that would need some work too. Uh, but yeah, so you'll probably be reducing the efficiency of the Falcon 9 stages in order to deal with the whole fact that they radiate. But I don't know how these are cooled either, because I don't think they have cooling channels in the nozzles of the BE-3Us, but... Uh, they have two of them on there, that's for sure. So uh, I haven't taken a look at how they cool these. So that's a good question. But anyway, I'll set that aside. So the New Glenn upper stage also needs to be strengthened to have 100 tons on top of it, or 95 tons. And, well, basically you should just be designing it from scratch. And that's sort of the lesson from SLS, isn't it? That if uh, taking off the shelf components didn't save that much money. You, I, I, some people mentioned uh, Delta III. Uh, no, this is the Delta III version, right? So this is the super heavy with uh, large uh, 
Hydrolox tank here, sort of like, um, th this is actually 12 meters, but it's, it's sort of like a Nova tank, uh, so large Saturn V. And then the 12 meter upper stage, which will definitely have a lot of juice. And then that's plenty of margin for our lander and Orion to get to the moon. Uh, so you could have this. As long as you have more volume, you get more performance from Hydrolox than Mephalox. If you have a fixed volume, then you will get more performance from Mephalox than Hydrolox. So you can't take Starship and then make it Hydrolox and expect better performance from it. It won't carry as much payload. But if you can enlarge the tanks, then for the same mass, you will get better performance from Hydrolox than Mephalox. So in this case, we basically we basically have the same mass on top of Super Heavy. Uh, so there's 1,000 tons here, and then this is 254 tons. You sum this plus this together, then you get the fuel mass of Starship, and then 100 tons of payload on top. That's perfect, right? Uh, so that is exactly what Super Heavy is meant to carry. And now you're getting better performance because these tanks are meant to do this and they're Hydrolox and so you finish over it with this, you go to the moon with that and it'll be all right. And you could do that and because they're 12 meter tanks instead of the thinner tanks that we have with New Glenn and all and the 9 meter tank for the expendable Starship, this whole thing isn't as tall. and we are using procedural tanks here, so the strength is sort of built in. I think uh, the mass ratio is not too far off from what it would need to be considering. So yeah, uh, we really don't need the grid fins. Maybe I, I forget if this actually this setup might actually allow super heavy to be recoverable. I forget. So yeah, this is an option, and but you would have to develop these stages, these really large Hydrolox stages. So anyway, we are going to launch this and see what kind of margin we get without modifying the New Glenn upper stage at all. And maybe we need to lengthen it, but I've got this built up. We might as well try it out and see how it does as far as whether it can ha retain enough Delta V to transfer us to the moon after it reaches orbit, despite the fact that it's lighter than the Falcon 9 stage. You know, we had about the same Delta V, so we'll see how it is. The, the, the key here is because it's lighter, it's causing less of a burden for this stage. And so even though this stage provides about the same amount of Delta V as the Falcon 9 stage pair did uh, without any modifications here. Uh, it's allowing this stage to provide more Delta V and therefore we and we want to top that off and therefore we might be able to actually complete the transfer to the moon with this stage without uh, expanding it or without using any fuel from the lander and Orion. So that's why I want to test but there's just a numerical curiosity right i'm just seeing delta v wise as this stack is without dealing with the fact that actually it probably ought to be strengthened and as i occasionally say for some ideas this is not a good idea <laughs> so uh i is is the one with the 12 meter tanks a good idea not necessarily but but if you were going to have to put it all on one rocket you could do it is the point of that and that one stands better chance than this but probably you just should launch it on different rockets and do it like that you know there's no good reason to launch it all on one rocket really i mean because you have two parts and we have done practice with rendezvous we have done a lot of rendezvous now and we have automated rendezvous stuff so with Apollo, they had to do it like that because they didn't have practice with Rendezvous and they didn't have GPS and stuff like that. And so it was all very complicated. But now we have had a lot of practice with Rendezvous. We don't have to put it all on one stack. We're not as nervous about uh, having things docked together. And so we have more reliability in that respect. Uh, and so we should send them separately. And besides, 
Uh, we can't really dock them the way I did in the previous video, as was pointed out by one comment. Uh, actually, you can't transfer a crew through a docking port up here. Uh, there is no crew tube that goes down into the cabin. You have to dock it on this flap here. Neither the Blue Moon Lander nor Orion can actually provide thrust for the entire stack if it's docked like that. All right, I'm not going to go through the whole mission because I still haven't fixed the Orion capsule, so we know that's not going to work well. Oh, that throttle's not working. All right. So, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, ignition. And launch. Another option is to try to put the EUS on top. And the good thing about the EUS is it's somewhat flatter than the Muglin upper stage. It's about the same size, but that might work out for us. Uh, again, you would have to strengthen the stages. It's still ultimately about the same mass as this. It would look horrible. As far as I'm concerned, my sort of optimal plan has some rendezvous and multiple launches, but not too many launches. I don't like all of the refueling, uh, refueling launches that are required for Lunar Starship, for instance. I mean, I would say it, there's probably an optimal number of rendezvous necessary for a given mission so that you minimize the amount of time it's going to take and the risk involved. And we're probably talking about four would be okay four launches, but I think that's something that people could do some analysis on, some risk mitigation analysis. My guess would be it's somewhere in the ballpark of four. It would be a good number of launches to put, put something together. Two would be nice too, I mean frankly two would be the easiest. Four is probably okay. Okay, staging. And launch escape system. Okay, actually it ran out just about where I wanted it to. And it exploded. Well, a little bit of a mystery. It's not showing me the Delta V here. There we go. Oop. So, uh, we are in orbit. We have 3,618, it says, which is great. So, it does have enough to transfer to the moon, and it would have enough then to also capture us around the moon if it could control boil off, which it almost certainly can't. Uh, so, uh, the payload would have to do the same thing it did in the previous video and deal with that stuff on its own, but at least it's not... Uh, having to complete the transfer in this case. And we're only 254 tons, which means that uh, there would be less reinforcement necessary for this version, but still we need to make changes to pre pretty much everything as usual. Uh, you, you really can't just mix and match stages very well. They overbuilt certain things in the old days or just tolerated really low uh, reliability in the 50s and 60s and then mix and match things, toss on a, a, a Gina stage on Atlas and then have it crumple a little bit and then strengthen the top of the Atlas. They did stuff like that in those days, but uh, we generally don't still do things like that. And you really need to design the stages for the load they're going to carry on top of them. And that is the main problem here. But if, if you want to de design new stages, maybe go with the 12 meter hydrolock stages. Uh, that could be fun, though. I'm, I think that there's less of a chance of SpaceX wanting that than even working with Blue Origin on this. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, with the sun setting behind us, I'll just leave this here and say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.